ever created by human kind actually are from ancient india many of them they got uh, damaged they over the period of time and many of them have been now restored digitally for the world to see but it's important for us to be aware of two very important facts that will be conveyed that will be revealed uh, to the amazing and honorable dignitaries that are here today that there is a lost continuous tradition of art which will be revealed through the revelation of the earliest surviving painting from the hindu tradition which is from the badami caves in karnataka uh, state in india and through this reveal we will be informing the world that the value of ancient indian art is probably at the greatest level when it comes to elevation of human consciousness so uh, let me you know officially welcome all the honorable dignitaries who are here today with us we have uh, ambassadors and high commissioners from india two different countries across the world we have got ambassadors from various countries to india today with us we have honorable cabinet ministers current and former from different countries here with us today uh we have got some amazing personal personalities in the space of uh, art literature film uh, people who carry forward the legacy of art with us today from across the world we have got uh, some uh, amazing industry leaders also today with us and uh, we have of course got various eminent media personalities uh, we will uh, of course over the period of the of the conversation in the next 1 hour or so we will ask our chief guest and various dignitaries to share their thoughts on what is going to be revealed so without further ado let me actually initiate the proceedings uh, let me invite uh, the person without whom this would not have been possible the person who has been responsible for revealing ajanta caves about 30 years ago to the world through his lens through his photographs a person who is a distinguished art historian filmmaker and an international authority on ancient indian art let me welcome shri binay bahal to uh, initiate this proceedings to initiate the process of reveal uh binay sir yes uh, thank yeah. you thank you very much uh, mr ashwin shrivastav for your uh, very kind words and uh, all the interest which you have taken uh, in my work on ajanta and on the ancient uh, paintings of india dr vinay sahasrabuddhi uh, honorable uh, president of the indian council for uh, cultural relations thank you so much shri suresh prabhu honorable member of parliament and india's sherpa to g7 and uh, g20 thank you so much for being with us for this occasion my thanks also to professor ashutosh sharma secretary department of science and technology who has very kindly taken a warm interest in uh, my exhibitions and my work on uh, uh, early indian paintings my heartfelt thanks to mr amish tripathi world renowned author and director of the nehru center london uh, who has very kindly uh, agreed to hold uh, the exhibition of uh, by photographs and the restoration of these uh to premiere that exhibition at the uh, nehru center london before uh, sapio goes on to take these uh, photographs and this exhibition to so many other parts of the world thank you 
My thanks to Mr. Prashant Nikam, Chairman of uh, SAPIO. Thank you so much for uh, uh, so much that uh, SAPIO is doing to, uh, to encourage my work. In fact, uh, SAPIO uh, preserved one photograph of mine of Ajanta earlier in the uh, Arctic uh, World Archives and are uh, now going to be preserving the painting which we will reveal today, as well as my paper written on the subject. Uh, excellencies, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, so good of you to have joined us uh, on this occasion today. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, such as a beautiful sunrise or an art, shall we say, like an Ajanta painting, our experience in that moment is considered to be akin, similar to Brahmananda itself, the final bliss of salvation itself. For in that moment, the veils of illusion, the veils of Maya or Mithya are believed to be lifted and we are seeing the grace which underlies all of creation. Therefore, art has been of fundamental and enormous importance in the Indian traditions of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism. The temples and caves of India has been full of hundreds of thousands of works of art of the most sublime quality. Because the purpose of art as in fact uh, also defined by the Chitra Sutra, the earliest known uh, treatise on art making in the world. The purpose of art is to reveal the true knowledge, is to show us the grace which underlies all the ephemeral and passing shapes of the world, which only create a confusion. Now, um, I uh, had the good fortune, I had the joy of uh, photographing the uh, paintings of Ajanta, which had not been clearly seen to the world because they're inside dark caves and uh, strong lights are not allowed to be uh, used by the Archaeological Survey of India, as these would definitely fade the colors of the ancient paintings. So these paintings had not been clearly seen before. And I had the good fortune of having invented a technique of photography in extremely low light conditions, which we can casually call darkness. So when I took these photographs back in 1991 and in 92, uh, the Director General of the Archaeological Survey of India wrote me a letter to say that I had conquered the darkness of the Ajanta caves. The leading authorities on Ajanta in India, like uh, Dr. Sadanand Gorakshekhar, like uh, Mr. Karl Khandalawala, around the world, the leading authorities, for instance, Dr. Stella Cranbridge, all of them from all over the world, everybody said, that these photographs were revealing the details and colors of Ajanta as they had never seen them before. Immediately, uh, museums and universities in India, such as the National Museum of India and the Archaeological Survey of India, as well as around the world, such as the British Museum in London, the Victoria and Albert Museum, the Metropolitan Museum of New York, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC, National Geographic, the Tokyo National University of Fine Arts and Music, etc. the leading universities and museums of the world, immediately invited me to speak on the subject and to show these glorious Indian paintings of the fifth century of Ajanta. Now, you would be happy to know 
that uh, there was a unanimous response to the Ajanta paintings from all the leading art historians, leading critics of art who were gathered in these capitals of culture of the world. And they said that these paintings are surely the finest art of humankind. At this point, uh, I will uh, request you to give me a moment as I start uh, sharing the screen and uh, uh, go to the PowerPoint I have uh, for you. And yes, this is the glorious fifth century painting of the Bodhisattva Vajrapani in cave one of Ajanta, one of the most beautiful paintings ever made by man. And all these uh, leading authorities of the art of the world pointed out to me that uh, these fifth century paintings in fact, had the technical virtuosity, which Western art, for instance, only developed a thousand years later in the late uh, Renaissance period. As a matter of fact, they pointed out qualities of art in these paintings, which came in Western art even later during the period of the Impressionists, during the period of the Expressionists, and even the qualities of art, which are found only in the modern period in uh, Western art. And all these they found in the fifth century paintings of Ajanta. It was a marvelous experience for me to be moving around the world at these great museums and to be hearing such wonderful praise of ancient Indian paintings. And even more than technical virtuosity, what was found to be of great value in this beautiful art, what gave value to this art as so fundamentally important to humankind was the vision of life which it contained. It was a vision full of compassion. It was a vision full of caring. It was a vision full of warmth. In fact, the thousands of figures that are painted across the walls of Ajanta exude this caring for each other. It is truly a world of compassion which takes you over completely as you see the paintings at Ajanta. And here you see the Bodhisattva King Mahajanak. He has renounced his kingly life and is seen here as he rides out of the palace to become an ascetic. And you would see that inward look which has come into his eyes, that sense of peace about him and that inward look. For here he begins on another journey, a much more important journey. Despite all the activity of life around him, his look is within. And it is this look within, which is the hallmark of the great art of India. It is this which transports people. It is this which makes this art truly sublime. However, it was only when I photographed the end uh, 10th century paintings of the grand Brahadishwara temple at Tanjavur that uh, uh, art experts, historians, leading historians of Indian art around the world said to me that we have to revise our understanding of the history of Indian painting. 
And when I said, why is that? They said that uh, the paintings of Ajanta were known, but they were regarded as a flash in the pan because paintings before Ajanta in India were not known. And for paintings and paintings for 700 years after Ajanta in India were not known. However, these paintings, such as the one you are looking at now, these paintings which I was showing had the technical virtuosity of the Ajanta paintings. And obviously then there was a continuous tradition of painting in ancient India. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the good fortune thereafter to go on and photograph, document other fifth century paintings in India and paintings in India of the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th century. All these clearly establish the fact of a continuous tradition of painting from ancient to medieval times in India. This that you see before you was taken in 2001. This is a painting termed Queen and Attendance of the Badami Caves in Karnataka of the sixth century. Actually, art historians with, who had visited the Badami Caves in the 1950s had noted many beautiful paintings which were in the Badami Caves. But by the time I reached there in 2001, there was very little that survived. And this was the most notable remnant. In fact, when National Geographic magazine were doing a major story about my work of documenting Indian art, and they visited the Badami Caves, by then, even this was not uh, visible, which makes this photography of some uh, significance in the understanding of the history of Indian art. Now, as you would observe, there is much damage in the painting, damage of the passage of time, uh, much damage in the painting. Therefore, I worked carefully, painstakingly and with due love to restore this painting as I have done with paintings, masterpieces uh, from the Ajanta Caves. And ladies and gentlemen, with uh, great thanks uh, to the uh, chief guests, Dr. Vinay Sastra Buddhaji and Sri Suresh Prabhuji and the other dignitaries who are so kindly assembled here. I take pleasure in showing you the final restored version of this, the earliest surviving painting of the Hindu tradition in India. And there you are. You would uh, observe there is again that gentleness of expression, which is the hallmark of Indian art, of the best of Indian art. You would observe that inward look that melts away your ego, that melts away all your concerns with the noise and clamor of the material world. That inward look that takes you to a peaceful sanctuary, which is deep within yourself. It is this, ladies and gentlemen, which is the greatness of Indian art. And uh, my many thanks to uh, CPU analy Analytics for uh, bringing this before all of you and for uh, today revealing this to the world. Uh, Mr. Ashwin Srivastav, I would request you to now please uh, take over. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Vina, sir. Uh, I think it is through your eyes, through your lens, that we are able to see the true significance, the true value of what ancient Indian art is and how it can actually not just impact the mind, the hearts, but the soul. This uh, particular painting that we saw right now will also be uh, preserved for eternity at the Arctic World Archive. 
uh, so that for generations to come, uh, this painting will remain for all of them to see and to be able to learn, learn from and to be able to elevate their consciousness. Moving on, uh, let us call upon our chief guest, the Honorable Member of Parliament, uh, India's Sherpa to G7 and G20, uh, Sri Suresh Prabhuji, who has been so kind enough to support the work that we have been doing. He was very kind at the time of the last uh, painting uh, from Ajanta Caves, which was also preserved at the Arctic World Archive to give his thoughts on that, which was also later uh, spoken about by the Prime Minister in his uh, Man Ki Baat address to the nation. Thank you, Suresh Prabhuji, for being here. I know, uh, would love to know your thoughts, love to have your thoughts on this, uh, this event. Thank you very much. And uh, I really appreciate this great initiative. I'm very happy to know that such a distinguished historian, scholar, photographer, and most importantly, not just a historian knowing history, but a custodian of history. Mr. Bell will be speaking to all of us. And really looking forward to his continuing his interest into working on such important issues. We always wonder where culture resides. We always often talk about culture. We talk about the heritage of that we all have through culture. But where does it decide? Where does it manifest? Culture manifests in many ways. It has many forms. But some of this, we keep talking about taking it forward, the heritage being moved into the new generations. If we don't know what our ancestors were, how they were so developed intellectually, culturally, socially. They had such a great abilities for art. It's been so well. If you don't know that, how can we say that I will take that culture forward? How can we know our own people who we now represent, who are, we are now their successors, without knowing their own creation, how do you know them? I cannot know anybody who lived 5,000 years ago, but I can know him through his work. I can know his ability through his own paintings, drawings. And to know that, you must preserve it. You must keep it alive. That is exactly what our great friend, our great one of the great sons of India, Mel Saab is doing. I really wish to congratulate him for doing a work in this particular way as a mission without any expectation and with a jail that is so rare to find in these particular days of everybody thinking of doing something with the purpose of getting something in return. Whereas he's only returning us to our own history, our own culture, our own traditions, and providing us peep into that knowledge of that, which will make all of us proud. But more importantly, whenever we lose link with history, with our own culture, our ability to progress diminishes. We are very, very fortunate as Indians 
that we have such a rich culture and heritage. But if I don't see it, how do I know what the culture and heritage was? Somebody tells me, I will keep repeating it. When I see it for myself, but when you go to such historical site, cultural heritage site, you feel so proud. When you go to Ajanta Elora, you wonder how it must have happened. One single stone could create such a marvel. How is it possible? What kind of people they must be? How they depicted their own thoughts and expressed them through this process of painting. They worshipped the deity which was reflected in this paintings and sculptures and many others. I am really therefore very proud that Bell Sahib is taking it forward. Bell Ji ki ye pehel ko mein bohut bohut adar niya haona vek karke unko bohut hi achcha kaam karne ke liye dhunwa deta hoon. And I am very happy that my friends who are trying to do this and trying to take it forward. I must congratulate Ashtin Srivastava and many others for CPOs and who are doing this great job of helping to take it forward. I remember as the Chancellor of Vishu University, we had partnered to preserve something as precious as this in faraway place that will be used for eternity. It will never be lost anymore as we have lost so many of our cultural heritage. Much of it. We have lost it. But what remains now will remain permanent and thanks to efforts of my young friends in this organization. But Bell Sahib, you have done what you have done. How much of your presence is done बहुत ही कम है आप इसी तरह से काम करते रहे आने वाले पीढ़ियों को हमारी कत पीढ़ियां कितनी एडवांस थी उसके बारे में जानकारी देते रहिए उसी से स्पूर्ति लेते हुए मैं पूरा विश्वास रखता हूं आने वाला हम सब का जीवन और ज्यादा समृद्ध होगा इस पर मुझे पूरा विश्वास है क्योंकि हम आर्थिक तर पे तरक्की करते हैं उसका जरूर लाभ होता है लेकिन सिर्फ पैसा कमाने से इतिहास किसी को याद नहीं रखता हम जब इस तरह के इन वी लीव बिहाइंड अ फुटप्रिंट ऑन द सैंड्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वे दैट इज व्हाट विल परमानेंटली रिमेंबर एंड देयरफॉर that permanence now is guaranteed by your photograph. And it is stored with the permanent memory of humanity thanks to the effort of my young friends from SEP. So I think both of you need to be congratulated, must be commended immensely and should be honored in a fitting way. But one of the best ways to honor it for me as of now is to pay my tributes to all of you a great effort that you're doing. And I can assure you, we'll work together and continue this endeavor of ensuring that past is not lost to future. The history will now be the guiding, motivated spirit for our futuristic endeavors. Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir. Thanks a lot for this wonderful, insightful, inspiring words from your side. We, we would love to make sure that we take this message forward, that our culture, our history is the basis of our progress as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, so now we would like to call upon our chief guest, honorable member of parliament, uh, president of ICCR, uh, Sri Dr. Vinay Shahasubudeji. Sir. Thank you, Ashwin Shivastavji. And uh, first of all, let me 
respectfully address uh, the man of this particular uh, evening, Shri Binoy Bahelji. Also, my senior uh, friend in Rajya Sabha and former minister and the current uh, Sherpa of India for uh, G20, Shri Suresh Prabhuji. Also, uh, Hardik Sumani, who has been uh, behind all these efforts, and all his colleagues and uh, ladies and gentlemen present in this uh, virtual function. Uh, when I accepted that I would be joining this event, uh, I was a little uh, uh, perplexed because I'm not a student of fine arts as such, much less of archaeology. And therefore, uh, I was wondering as to how exactly would I be able to contribute to the discussions that may be happening in this particular uh, function. But later on, I thought that uh, since I'm also able to uh, kind of appreciate art from the impressionistic point of view, at least, I can comment and pay my respects to the very valuable work done by Sri Binay Kumar Bahiji. So first of all, let me at the outset thank Hardik Somani for having me here on the one hand, and also thank Binay Bahiji and all his colleagues uh, for the wonderful work that uh, they are engaged in. Basically, uh, when we talk about our heritage, our legacy, and how exactly we have uh, traveled all through the centuries on the path of human evolution, evolution of human mind and evolution of civilizational values. I think uh, it is extremely necessary to meet with the question of our identity, who we are, that is a critical question. And uh, there was a time when the social scientists used to consider that the element of identity or the issue of identity is a primordial kind of uh, concern. But later on, I'm happy there is a change in their perception. And uh, that is reflected in the way various terminologies are used. For example, earlier, it was a fashion to call or to describe cities like New York or Mumbai or countries like India as melting pots, but no more. Today, social scientists say that we should be using the term instead of melting pot, salad bowl. So a salad bowl represents a situation where you continue to preserve your individual identity and still be a part of a larger holistic collective identity. And this is very important because identity and I believe art is also a part of or rather essential ingredient of our identity. All other things, today we are in the era of skill development and very naturally. But things like that tell you how to live. But the missions like in like what uh, Mr. Binoy Bahel is engaged in, these missions, in fact, explain you why to live. And this is the critical difference which we have to appreciate. And that takes me back to Anand Kumar Swami's writings. I was happy to listen to the mentions of Sadashiv Gorakshakarji from Mr. Bahel because I used to very closely interact with uh, Mr. Gorak Shikhar. And uh, when he was there at the Prince of Wales Museum, I used to visit his place very often and used to get to know several new things from Mr. Gorak Shikhar, whom I would describe as the, as the father of modern museology in India, if I may put it very humbly. And therefore, uh, when I, uh, was listening to Mr. Bahel, uh, it reminded me of what Anand Kumar Swami had written way back in uh, 
1908 in Modern Review, which was a publication that used to come out from Kolkata. And I'm quoting Mr. Kumar Swami, a very well-known uh, art historian. Anand Kumar Swami writes in 1908, and I'm quoting, speak to the ordinary graduate of an Indian university or a student from Ceylon of the ideals of Mahabharata, he will hasten to display his knowledge of Shakespeare. Talk to him of religious philosophy. You find that he is an atheist of the crude type common in Europe a generation ago, and that not only has he no religion, but is lacking in philosophy as the average Englishman. Talk to him of Indian music. He will produce a gramophone or a harmonium and inflict upon you both of them. Talk to him of Indian dress or jewelry. He will tell you that they are uncivilized and barbaric. Talk to him of Indian art. It is news to him that such a thing exists. Ask him to translate for you a letter in his own mother tongue. He does not know it. He is indeed a stranger in his own land. Unquote. And this is what a visionary like Mr. Kumar Swami wrote more than 100 years before. And I'm sorry to say that even after a century or even more than that, I don't think we have made any remarkable progress on the path of knowing ourselves. We don't know what we are in uh, a particular abhanga, which is uh, very popular in Maharashtra, they say, Tuze ahe, tuza pashi, paritu jaga tsukalasi. You know, and you have all that you have to possess, but unfortunately, you have forgotten as to where you have kept it. And that is the crisis in which we find ourselves today. And therefore, to reminding the future generations of the past generations and their great work and the legacy that we carry forward and the heritage on the shoulders of which we are standing tall today, it's something very, very important. And in that context, I believe the work that is being carried out by Mr. Vinay Bahel, Vinay Bahel is extremely significant and it has got a historic importance, if I may put it that way. So in that sense, I believe today, when we talk about the lost traditions of art and also celebrate the efforts to revive these traditions, it is also something to do with freeing ourselves from the colonized mind. It is the decolonization. And I'm happy the new education policy that has now been unveiled, in a way, is the path of demacolization of Indian minds. Because it was the Macaulay who tried to colonize our thinking. And unfortunately, even for more than seven decades, our governments of the day could not free Indian minds from the impact, from the deep impact of colonization. And in that context also, I greatly value the work that is being carried out by Sri Binoy Behel and helped by our young friends like Hardik Somani and all of this. Let me make three critical points here as part of suggestions before I close my presentation. Firstly, I believe that uh, in India, and many of my friends in the world of fine arts tell me that when it comes to art education, again, an impact of colonization, that there is a distinction, an uncalled for distinction between art and craft, as what they say. We value the, the, the abstract drawings from several renowned painters, and I respect them greatly. But that doesn't mean that uh, we should not be equally considering valuable the works 
by our tribal artists, maybe in Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, or the Warli painters, or the Pattachitra painters, or the Madhubani painters for that matter. Our folk art is equally a modern art. Let us not distinguish. Let us not have this new Chaturvarnya kind of in the world of arts. Whether art or craft, as a student, as somebody who appreciates or who tries to learn the art of appreciation, I believe, and I hope I'm not too wrong, that this artificial distinction between art and craft perhaps requires to be done away with. We at the ICCR are trying to bring all our uh, artisans also in the fold of art and culture. And therefore, I believe this is something which we should be applying our mind. Secondly, when it comes to cultural relations, and I'm happy Suresh Prabhuji is also joining this event. And uh, during the last three years, with the help of the Niti Aayog, ICCR attempted to establish the primacy of cultural relationship when it comes to the vibrancy of our economic, strategic, and even diplomatic relations across the globe. From times immemorial, India's <clears throat> external relations were based basically on art, culture, traditions. Before perhaps Indians could go to Malaysia and Indonesia, our Ramayana and Mahabharata went there. Today in ICCR, when we conduct a Ramayana festival every year, troops are welcomed from across the globe and especially our Southeast Asian countries. And a country like Brunei, my officials in ICCR were wondering whether they would send a troop in the Ramayana festival. When I asked them, why are you so apprehensive? They said, oh, sir, you don't know. It's a 100% Islamic country. I said, so what? Extend an invitation. And I was happy to see there was a beautiful uh, presentation coming from a troop which the Brunei government sent over here. And when they were asked by some journalists that you represent Islam insofar as your way of worship is concerned, and you are presenting a ballet on the basis of uh, a story in Ramayana, how is it so? They said, why should you wonder? Our religion is different, but our culture is the same. And that is the important point, which I believe we will have to keep in mind when we evolve stronger economic, diplomatic, and even strategic relations across the, board, across the globe. Let us appreciate the importance of cultural relations. That is the second point which I would like to make. The third is that uh, uh, now that uh, several international groupings have taken shape, whether it is BRICS or G20 or G7 or whatnot, I believe many countries, especially in Southeast Asia, require the technology that India has evolved in the restoration art or art of restoration, whatever you call it. And therefore, we need to have some structured courses. I'm happy some of the agencies in the government are working towards that. And such structured courses in preservation, conservation, and restoration of ancient art, I believe, would be a welcome step to make deeper inroads in countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, so on and so forth. And I'm sure that the government efforts will definitely be successful. And we will have many such courses under the guidance of artists like Benoit Behelji and others evolved sooner than later. And the last point, with the advancement of uh, new technologies, as what they call, whether it is uh, artificial intelligence, whether it is 3D printing, so on and so forth, I believe we can do much more in this restoration technologies, art restoration technologies. IIT Delhi has come out with some beautiful experiments, wonderful experiments to 
preserve our art tradition, to preserve our heritage. I think there needs, needs to be replication and a kind of mainstreaming of all such efforts so that we can further preserve and not only preserve, but also pass on this very valuable heritage to the younger generation, to the generations to come. And therefore, in all this and in this entire context, I believe the work that is being carried out by Sri Binod Bahel and supported by many of his colleagues is extremely important. Once again, let me congratulate him. Let me offer all my best wishes and let me extend every support that such efforts may require from the Indian Council for Cultural Relations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very, very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The work that ICCR is doing while being able to combine new age technologies and working towards making sure that we value our art in a way and that we can start knowing ourselves better through our art. I think ICCR has been doing a great job of that. And thank you, sir, for, you know, for all your support uh, towards that. Uh, uh, thank you for your words. And let us proceed to the next session of our event. So now I would love to have various comments and thoughts from the various dignitaries that we have here. Before we start that, let me quickly uh, mention the fact that this session is being recorded. And after, uh, you know, after the event, it will be distributed in various forms to hundreds of thousands of uh, art lovers across the world through our partners uh, in London, uh, Ajanta HC. Uh, we will, of course, uh, talk more about that in a minute. Uh, would love to now have thoughts and comments about this uh, revelation from the various dignitaries that we have here today. What we can do is that probably those who have uh, specific thoughts and comments to be made, you may kindly use the raise hand button uh, on, on Zoom uh, to be able to do that. That will be great. Uh, I will actually start off by inviting Professor uh, Ashtosh Sharma, Secretary DSG, uh, to be able to uh, give his thoughts first, and then uh, we will proceed uh, with the rest of the discussion. Oh, thank you, Ashwini. I was just about to leave, and I am so afraid that I, I joined late, and okay. by which time the, the main piece of the show was already over. So I really haven't any idea about what was the revelation and I, I got a bit delayed in a meeting. I'm so, so sorry. Uh, anyhow, um, I think that this was perhaps related to an agenda painting that you restored with your super intelligence or artificial intelligence or something like that. Uh, is that correct? Now, could, uh, Ashwini, could you tell me what exactly was uh, actually shown here? Um, and so, like I told you, I missed it. So we revealed the earliest surviving painting from the Hindu tradition. And we also talked about how uh, there has been this continuous tradition of uh, painting, which has not been uh, known to the world. Uh, you know, typically this knowledge has not been there. And we really want to take this knowledge to the world that uh, about this lost tradition of art which has been there. Oh, fantastic. I think so. That this is certainly such an important aspect. And I have been uh, a very long-standing admirer of uh, Sri Binay Behel's work. I've had the good fortune of seeing some of his um, exhibitions and reading some of his books and stuff. And then, of course, you always wonder that all this heritage, all this great work, uh, you know, is constantly lost. And then suddenly it would be lost uh, to generations to come and all the delight and the sense of wonder that we have felt looking at all of these works, uh, what becomes of them. Um, and, and so suddenly technology of the kind that Ashwin you are bringing to the table uh, is the savior. Um, and so we, for example, started a program called Heritage Science uh, some time back. And the whole idea in that is to leverage your technology uh, to make things immortal. 
uh, of course, uh, you know that this will also be translated uh, for all of us in terms of building a persona. Uh, but there's another topic that we should discuss some other day. Uh, basically, you know, not, not just the works of art, but the people who made those works of art also deserve to live forever by using technologies. I'm not talking about medical sciences. I'm talking about recreating the persona which grows with the times using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so on. Uh, fantastic things on the horizon for the future. But now, I just want to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Bell and uh, Ashwin Yu for, for bringing science uh, and art and the things that we delight in together. Uh, so there is, no, we don't live by science alone. We don't live by technology alone. Uh, certainly there are good tools and if you can bring them to the table to enhance the flavor uh, of our life, to enrich uh, our mind uh, and, and go forward with that in the future, then we have done our job. Uh, so indeed I couldn't comment on uh, the stuff that you had shown before, but I can imagine it in my mind's eye as to the splendor of all that you could have recreated. Uh, if you have um, a link uh, to that will be or, or something that I could see later, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, I would love uh, comments from uh, celebrated author, diplomat, uh, Amish Tripathi ji as well. Professor Binoy Bell, what an honor to meet you, sir, uh, albeit online. Um, you know, there's this lovely uh, line that is, uh, that is an ancient African line, that uh, the stories of the hunt will always glorify the hunters until the lions get their own storytellers. Uh, we were the lion culture. We are the only surviving pre-Bronze Age ancient culture. Every single other pre-Bronze Age culture has been wiped out. We are the only ones who survived. And the sad part is even after we became independent, uh, we could have had an excuse during the era of the invasions when the Turks and the Europeans were ruling us. But there's very little excuse post-1947 that why didn't we revive our own narratives. We still believe many of the nonsensical uh, uh, stories that were told to us, you know, that India didn't exist as a country till the British created us, which is of course nonsense because the Vishnu Puran speaks of Bharat Varsha as a country 2000 years before the British had even created their own country, which is the United Kingdom. Uh, we believe that our ancestors didn't write uh, didn't leave records and it was all oral and that's why we have to be dependent on what the British or the Turks told us about us, which is again not true. Despite the destruction of the Nalanda and Takshashila and so many other great universities, uh, the National Mission of Manuscripts has uh, uh, tabulated there are over 3 million Sanskrit manuscripts that survive till today. Uh, that is more than the rest of the ancient world combined. Our ancestors wrote a hell of a lot. The shame is on us, on today's Indians who have not taken the trouble and the effort of translating and studying the works of our ancestors. The beliefs that, uh, you know, that our arts and these things were all again created with uh, the invasions and the invaders taught us how to paint or how to sculpt, etc. And as, uh, you know, as at times is told that the wonderful paintings of Ajanta were a fluke. Uh, were a one-off uh, shot, uh, and which is where this is another area where we need to build our own narrative. We need to learn, tell our own stories, as Professor Bell said so uh, perfectly. And Ashwin, your uh, and your team's work has brought out the wonderful paintings of Adami and so many others, which are bringing out that there was a highly sophisticated uh, technical school and uh, schools rather of paintings across uh, uh, the, uh, the various parts of the country, which we have not studied. The Indian university arts education still uh, classifies arts by, you know, Renaissance era and Baroque era and modern era. That's not our classification. That is 
you know the european classification and i can understand a european university teaching that why in god's name are our own indian universities teaching that there are many steps that need to be taken to make our education system and our knowledge systems reconnected to our roots once again and among the lion storytellers who are driving this very very important revolution is uh, of course professor binoy bel uh, you are the storyteller of the lion sir uh, and as is ashwin your your great supporter in this the lions will have rca now the hunters will not be glorified anymore uh, thank you so much for all the work that you are doing and uh, my compliments uh, to this great work and i hope lord shiva continues to bless his enterprise with more and more success thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you so much very kind of you thank you so after the pandemic pandemic ends we will love to host our, you know love to be hosted at the nehru center in the certainly certainly okay uh, so i would love to have uh, comments now thoughts now from uh, his excellency sri rajeshwar prasad uh, ex officio cabinet cabinet minister from the republic of guinea bissau special advisor to the prime minister there uh, sri shri prasad hello everybody i'm sorry i'm in a you know bit of crowded place i have a small question for excellency vincenzo sir what do you think india should be doing to sort of you know project indian art as one of those of the golden age painters of europe or for example you know the great painters that italy has produced in its history Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let's uh, me first of all thank uh, Sabio Analitica for the invitation and thank uh, Sri Suresh Prabhu, our friend, as well as uh, the president of ICCR, uh, uh, Shas Rabude, and also my friend uh, Sharma, with which with whom we uh, share a lot of very interesting uh, research project, precisely also on heritage. i would also uh, underline that uh, uh, in this very difficult covid time when both india and italy suffered severe consequences of the pandemic we want to reaffirm the friendship and solidarity between our two countries and reinforce our cultural interaction In this year with the ICCR we have organized a cultural festival in India from Italy and in Italy from India. Of course a lot of this event due to the circumstances have been done in digital modalities but we hope second half of this year to have also events with the physical presence. The cultural exchange and I want also to thank professor Benoit Bell of course The cultural exchange between Italy and India date back to an ancient history. Not only can ties between European and Indian culture be traced back to 700 years before Christ, but there are also testimonies of linguistic influences in the 16th century. In the last century Giuseppe Tucci and Luigi Tessitore contributed to the knowledge of indian culture and artistic tradition in europe and in italy by collecting the scientific studies and artistic testimonies still preserved in italy as you may be aware italy has a very long and high standing tradition of indology in fact we are very proud of our indian italian scholars of indology Many of them have graduated from La Sapienza University Rome, Orientale from Naples, Ca Foscari from Venice, and now are working in prestigious uni university in Europe, in the United States and in the rest of the world. To celebrate and divulgate their work, the Italian embassy started working on a very special project I want to announce here today. curated by Professor Raffaele Torella, 
from the Italian Institute of Oriental Study of La Sapienza University of Rome. The project will see the light in the second half of this year. It's made up of four volumes dedicated to Indian culture and literature, economics and society, art and the biography of Giuseppe Tucci, the most influential scholar of the 19th century of Asian studies and Indology. The outstanding Italian tradition of Indology touched also upon traditional art. In fact, over the years, we have carried out a number of activities with our Indian partners. I would like to touch upon two projects of particular relevance that were initiated in 25 within an agreement between the Archaeological Survey of India and the Italian Ministry of Culture. The first project lasted until 2012 and focused on the restoration and conservation of mural paintings in cave number 17 in Ajanta. This project involved a very prestigious institution in Italy, Istituto Centrale per il Restauro, Museo Nazionale d'Arte Orientale. The outcome of the study were summarized in two publications available. The second project focused on the Brahma, Brahmanic cave of Deccan. This is still ongoing and is characterized by the study of the cave of Ellora, where paintings from the 8th and 9th century were found. Western Deccan is, as you know, among the areas of the Indian subcontinent showing the highest concentration of sanctuaries excavated in rock. Italy also hosted a number of exhibitions, including in 2011 murals of India with photos from Benoit Bell and numerous conferences to further debate and disseminate knowledge on the ancient artistic Hindu findings. I am very glad that Italy has contributed significantly to those studies. I would like to reiterate in this occasion the importance of people-to-people -people relation, cultural interaction based on the exchange of expert knowledge, study, findings and research. Italy and India are two cultural superpowers and share a very vivid cultural background that encourage us to continue working towards strengthening our cultural ties and elaborating further on existing projects. I am very much looking forward to the publication of the four volume I mentioned before on Indology, and I do hope it will be of your interest. Many thanks for this enriching conversation. Ab sab ko meri bahut shubka mnaye. Thank you. Dani Abad. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks for all the support that Italy is giving in these times. Okay, uh, there's another announcement, uh, very uh, interesting announcement from uh, the Republic of Guinea-Bissau itself. Uh, we are opening up a, a Narendra Modi Center for Culture and Excellence at uh, in at Guinea-Bissau. It's it has been initiated. It has been proposed. Uh, Sri Prashad, anything you would like to talk about that as well? And we'd love to have uh, our, the, the painting that we revealed today at the center, uh, along with other works of uh, Sri Bina Bahel. Thank you. It's, uh, you know, such a great uh, pleasure and honor to sort of, you know, <clears throat> Naren, uh, Prime Minister Modi is now, uh, you know, is, is a brand, you know, he's, he's known everywhere now because of him, India is everywhere. And all the great, you know, uh, work that he is doing, uh, a far-flung country like Guinea-Bissau wants to take advantage of, you know, or take benefit out of his, uh, by setting up a center of excellence. And, you know, we want to introduce all sorts of things, you know, that is known for India, like, you know, the uh, yoga center, the Ayurvedic center, and, you know, there is uh, 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 all... Uh, Indian culture to be exposed to West Africa so that, you know, people of West Africa benefit out of what India is offering. 
and we request you know the honorable minister and uh, 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 also shri uh, sashrabuddhi to help us out in this you know we tried reaching out to prime minister's office we our pm wrote to shri modi and then you know but it's lost somewhere but we need your intervention to reach out to the right people and then see what can be done and you know how to go forward okay thank you thank you sir prasad for this wonderful you uh, know thank you you on your end uh, would love to have uh, thoughts and comments from uh, other dignitaries as well uh, you may uh, choose to unmute yourself and ask your questions or provide your thoughts and comments on uh, on this historical event uh, after that we'll move to the media uh, session being hosted by our partner uh, shri uh, chulan ji we'll talk about that in a minute uh, if you know you'd love to have any more thoughts from any of the dignitaries here Uh, may i with your permission please yeah yes dr suri please. yeah okay so this is dr monica suri head of school of business oro university though i am not at all aligned to arts and uh, but i am also the appreciator and uh, uh, being the indian i am proud indian to actually be the part of this event today so uh, my question to all who are present here today is like as an academician and educationist i would like to know from all of you that whatever becomes the economic driver is always important for the economical growth of the country so as we have seen in the past also like you know when it comes to foreign tourist arrivals few times in few of the states you know we actually had some missing links so i just want to know from all of you that how how can we make the Uh, active engagement and involvement of community also in this particular process of sustaining this beautiful art piece of art that actually that has been created today so i just want to know uh, the role of youth in this along with that i just want to know the uh, involvement and engagement of community in this because i see lot of economical scope in this particular project being a faculty of marketing i actually analyze it from a very different perspective that's why i was keen to actually join this particular event so that i should also know my national responsibility as a educationist that how can i contribute as a faculty of business uh in you know in totality in this particular project so i just want to know from you like how are we going to have a road map to make it such a wonderful sustainable economical uh, model for a country so that all the stakeholders should get equally engaged and benefited and they also actually should contribute to the fullest to this beautiful ecosystem that has been created today Yeah. So anybody can respond to my question. I would love to hear from all the experts. That's a very, very wonderful point which you have put, Doctor Suri. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll take the answer yes. to her. I'm so glad that you speak about this because, in fact, uh, one of the problems in the so-called uh, modern world is the division which has been made between that which is cultured or art and that which is supposed to be the practical day-to-day uh, -day life of uh, economics now you would observe in fact that a deeply 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 developed culture has always led to the greatest economic prosperity ancient india was one of the most prosperous countries the world has ever seen with the greatest development of culture with the greatest focus upon culture itself in the modern world take japan japan which has learned so much from india japan has a culture deeply shared with india uh, i would love to tell you more about it another day but uh, the japanese are uh, are very uh, very fond of my work on uh, on how japan has shared and taken indian culture and what is the result the result is that in the modern world they have been economically uh, extremely successful so it's very important first of all to recognize that culture and art are not at all diverse from those qualities which lead to great prosperity and success the simple thing is to recognize 
that art is an essential part of life. And art should be brought into the teaching process right from the beginning, right from junior days in school. Art should be a part of life itself. And you will have the growth of a cultured body of people who will have discipline in them, which will have a deep sense of values in them, and who will lead to the finest of uh, prosperity in every way. And best of all, it will be a prosperity which does not destroy the ecosystem and the world around us. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, we have Dr. Sanjay Sudhay as well, and Mr. Sudhay and Dr. Sharma here in the corner. Uh, Shri Prasad, anything you you uh, would like to add to this? Your question. Basically, you have to look into how the painters, the golden age of European painting, why they are selling for billions of dollars, and a great painter like Raja Ravi Varma is hovering around one or two million dollars or something like that while he is one of the and if you look at the work of art of uh, 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 Raja Ravi Varma is in comparison no less than any international painter or some okay so and you know basically what we lack you know from India is we don't know how to package how to put it out to the international you know market and if at all you can come out with a model that you give the right exposure, right packaging, and you know <laughs> the right way to put it out there. I think Indian painters are no less, and you know I've been, I'm trying to, you know, I'm I'm also not a, you know, uh, uh, I'm new, I'm learning, and then trying to collect some art. And I think you know people like you should, if you have the ability to sort of you know uh, spare time on it, work on it, you should see how to sort of put us on the international platform. Yeah, I think that's one of the main agendas for this yeah, yeah. today. As well. uh, if you, I, you know, I, I come across so many different things, you know, the other day someone sent us, sent me a video message with one of those Lord Krishna's, you know, a small bowl from which you fill the water and it, you know, it's, it's pure physics and it has been, it was made up about 300 years back in India. So the people out there think India, is learning from the Western world while in, you know, uh, the whole world has learned out of India. You know, if you look at the architecture in Central Asia or uh, the, you know, we, we were one of the best, you know, so somehow, somewhere we lost this and we, lo we uh, lost touch with this digit to the international society. And then, you know, maybe you should work there and then see what can be done. Yes. Dr. Sahas Sude, uh, Honorable Chairman of AICT, you would love your comments as well. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, it was very exciting to listen to Dr. Binoy Behel, especially about uh, the education, culture, how they are related, how we have to start it from the primary school education onwards. Thankfully, new national education policy is opening up and the hard visions which are there between science, arts, commerce are going to be dissolved in the five, three, three, four system. And the last four years are going to be absolutely flexible. A student of physics can take music or painting, or similarly, a student of maths can take photography. I think this is what is going to be really empowering. So the new education policy talks about that. And then Vinayji, as well as Suresh Prabhuji, beautifully explained the entire ethos about our culture, our identity, and, uh, uh, you know, Amish, uh, beautifully said three bronze civilization the only surviving one i think we have to be proud about it we have to tell the story the india story has to be told the bharat story has to be told and it is not just in terms of uh, various uh, you know uh, uh, heritage sites or archaeological sites but it is in terms of holistic way the entire culture the rich heritage that we have whether it is in terms of health system ayurveda yoga to our own education system, Gurukula system to the Nalanda, Takshila, our housing, the way we were developing and constructing our houses or even temples, the architecture of that, food, clothing, festivals, art, craft, traditions, dance, drama, music, everything is there in this country. 
we gave to the world for several thousands of years and fortunately the ministry of education now and when it was mhrd we started off with this an indian knowledge systems division is established by the ministry in ai city we have already full fledged five employees working on that we have created a website where people who are interested in indian entire civilizational aspects may put in their you know expertise what they want to contribute what they have already contributed i think we have to create our story and the story of uh, what uh, rightly pointed out by amish is of the lions and not of the hunters and i think that is the the right thing which we need to do now and also along with that since i represent uh, technical education how some of these things can be brought into the curriculum uh, vinay ji beautifully talked about preservation conservation restoration expansion of all our uh, ethos and uh, various sites which are there uh, how artificial intelligence can be put in use how lasers can be used for creating some dimensional objects and which can be made exciting how technology or 3d printing for that matter and some of those uh, sites where we have really lost some of that how can we recreate uh, using uh, whether it is sculpting whether it is in terms of uh, other newer materials which look alike i think that preservation that conservation is also equally important and therefore some kind of coursework in all of this is significant and important and when we are talking about uh, you know business uh, economy uh, we we must be proud of our science and technology heritage and in some way we should we may not like the word but also market to the whole world thank you thank you sir thank you sir that's a very useful point okay so now i would love to move to the next session by inviting sri uh, vedan chulan ji uh, balakrishna chulan ji and uh, would love to have his thoughts on the on the works which got revealed today uh, by sri vinay vahal uh, uh, sri vedan chulan ji can you namaste um to all my distinguished guests there i like to introduce myself my name is balkrishna chulan i am speaking to all of you from london okay and um, i have been working together with sapio analytics in order to create one of the best site ever for the ajanta and then we have called it ajanta etsy but it covers uh, buddhism hinduism jainism and sikhism all all the three faiths that we have in india and then the most important thing we have done is that we have looked at the world how can we educate and promote indian culture art and heritage to the whole world and this is what we are doing at the moment okay we have managed to speak to different countries where they have different cultural organization we have explained to them that this is our aim is our goal and they have all said yes 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 please let us know as quickly as possible earlier when i was speaking to the speakers i have heard many words saying that we are not in, in a way spreading the beauty of indian culture and art and heritage to the world let me assure you that our organization in london and of course with sapu together working together we intend to let the whole world know about it and this is our objective and we will not stop until we are we have done that and the one thing i would like to say about mr binoji please i am so pleased what you have done for our culture and we are very very grateful about what you have done and we will carry on making sure that your work and your all all the books and whatever videos you have done will be shown to the world and this is only thing i can say from london here today okay thank you very much thank you thank you uh, sri chudan ji i think your support in making this global and making every single person in this world aware of the power of indian culture and heritage will go a very long way thank you for that can i add just one little bit Uh, we we have a saying that nothing is impossible in life if you put your mind to it and i would like to confirm to our a, a special guests that came today that we will not stop we will want to make sure that uh, our culture our art and our heritage is known to the world thank you thank you thank you would love now uh, questions 
from the media we have got eminent media personalities today here as well uh, shri chulan would you like to uh, you know uh, yeah. share that part as well yes of course because in order to let the world know about our culture we need the media business and the media are doing a, they have done already a lot of works uh, for us and uh, i would like to in, to let you know that i'm working closely with mr tarun basu who was the founder of ians news and uh, and he was he uh, and he is a has been a friend of mine and i've discussed this uh, our, our 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 objective and our what we are going to do to him and he said to me that he will be there for me to support me 100% Okay, I think we are also uh, uh, no running out of time now. Yeah, please, I'll just add something that, as you know very well, yeah, we have we have a UITV uh, channel from London, and of course we have our Agenda at Sea from London, and from of course from from Bangalore and from Mumbai with you, and we are going to make sure that the world knows about it. and we have over 18 million people already on our site and we'll make sure that more and more people know about us okay and especially to do with our culture and our art and the painting of mr sri binoji okay that will be done thank you thank you sir okay as hardik mentioned on the chat any media person who would like to speak please do share with him on the dm uh, because we are running out of time so you know we'd love to have questions on the dm uh now i think you know i uh, would like to move on to the last segment which is thanking everyone who has been here so to thank everyone i, I would like to call shivangi uh, from our team uh, who would be you know closing off the session for all of us thank you mr ashwin shrivastava i would like this opportunity to announce that sapio analytics will be preserving all these paintings in the arctic world archives at salvabad in norway earlier we had done so with the ajanta cave paintings for which we had received kind words of appreciation as well uh, and acknowledgement from the honorable prime minister shri narendra ji modi himself i am also happy to announce that sapio analytics is planning to organize series of exhibitions across the world under the aegis of iccr to show these path breaking photographs by shri binoy bhel ji to mark 75 years of india's independence in the year 2022 we would also like to thank shri amish tripathi ji the director of nehru center and author who has kindly agreed to launch these exhibitions at the nehru center london all this would not have been possible without the guidance of a lot of people present here the various thoughts generated by this event shall be shared with hundreds and thousands of art lovers and government officials from all over the world thanks to our ajanta etc partners in london a very warm thank you to our chief guests dr vinay shastrabuddhe ji and shri Pra Suresh Prabhu ji for their valuable time your inputs shall help us promote the vision of preserving our heritage and culture both globally and in india we have received immense support from your end and we look forward for the same in the coming future it's an indeed pleasure sir thank you very much i take this opportunity to also thank mr binoy k bhel ji without whom this event would not have been possible you have been continuously mentoring us since the initial days to mold this entire project we highly appreciate your efforts towards digitizing our culture across the globe through your pioneering photography thank you um i would also like to uh, thank uh, dr anil d shastrabuddhe ji for your presence we hope we will be able to contribute towards the indian knowledge system in the future we highly appreciate the words of professor ashutosh sharma for your active involvement and your work towards reach, restoring the cultural heritage through technology we would also like to thank his excellency rajeshwar prasad ji for his kind words and thoughts we would also like to thank the ambassadors of various countries to india for their time and kind words shared with us hope to have a great cultural exchange with these countries we highly appreciate the indian ambassadors the high commissioners diplomats across the globe who have spared some time from their busy schedule and witnessed this historical event we hope that we will be able to continue contribute and continue to the voice of india in these respective nations 
we would also like to thank the directors of ICCR centers across the globe, including Japan, Netherlands, Israel, and Australia for witnessing the event. And we hope to have a continuous and supportive relationship with you in the future. I would like to thank our partner, Balakrishna Cholunji, Director Ajanta HC London for actively supporting this event. Thank you, Prashant Nikamji, for guiding us and showing us the way ahead during this entire project. I would also like to thank all our friends from the media space, including Sri Mayam Chaya and Sri Tarun Basu. It is with your support we can reach every corner of the world. Also, we would like to thank all the industry leaders who have graced this event with their presence. We hope to have cooperate and industry support in making sure the value of what we have revealed today reaches to everyone in the world. I would also like to thank the representatives of various governments in India, art lovers and experts from all over the world who have graced this occasion. Special thanks to Deepika Alwat, museum curator, art consultant, who, with whom we are working on major restoration projects. I acknowledge the presence of everyone who has joined us today for this event and would love to have your comments and questions sent to us on the email ID hardik at the rate sapioglobal.com. The same is written in the chat box. Last but not the least, we would like to thank the entire event team who have worked day and night to make this event a success. Thank you so much, everyone. Looking forward to hosting you again in the future. Thank you.